Hi, welcome to a new episode. My name is Tace and I'm reporting to you live from the Combell headquarters in my nice and comfy little couch. Today we're going to talk about a very specific feature in Varnish 4.1. 4.1 being the latest release of Varnish. I'm going to talk about proxy protocol support. Now the proxy protocol is a protocol invented by HA Proxy, and HA Proxy is an open source load balancer. Uh, very commonly used, uh, we at Combell use it all the time, we love it. The proxy protocol adds a preamble, so a little piece of information about the origin connection. And that is information we usually don't have. It's very tricky to know what the client IP was. If we put a varnish in front of it, the X forwarded four header is automatically filled up. That's something that happened in 4.0, adding the X forwarded four header by default so we don't have to trick around that. Now if communicate over the proxy protocol, Varnish instantly knows what the original IP was because that was passed over the proxy protocol. It is then sent to the X forwarded four header and it's very easy if we have a layered setup to know what the original IP address was. Now why would you want to have all those layers? Well Varnish is has load balancing capabilities, but is not a load balancer per se. We know that Varnish does not support SSL, both for technical and political reasons. So we need another piece of software that sits in front of it and that terminates our SSL connection and communicates with Varnish over regular HTTP. HA Proxy could do that, but there's other software that can do that as well. Hitch, Stud, S-Tunnel, all software that could terminate SSL, communicate with Varnish over HTTP, and both support, or all of them, support the proxy protocol. Now Varnish needs to be aware of that fact. So by default, if we enable Varnish, we bind it to a port and a set of uh, interfaces, a set of IPs on your network interface. Now we can add an additional parameter and listen on an extra port, but then being on the proxy protocol. So you have your primary port, which will be HTTP in Varnish, and you add a secondary port, and you'll make it listen on the proxy protocol. That origin information that is stored in the client IP, the server IP. You also have these dedicated uh, variables, these new variables called local IP and remote IP that could contain information about its own server and the server it connects to. Still confused? Well, I'm going to show you how it works by, by, by giving you a demo. I have a, a VM setup containing three VMs I made in Vagrant, one that contains HA proxy, one that contains Varnish and the third one is a web server and we'll make them communicate with each other and I'll show you the different IP settings if you use proxy protocol or if you use regular HTTP and you'll immediately see what the benefits are. So the first thing we're going to do is log into our HA proxy server. We do that using the vagrant SSH HA proxy uh, command and then that way we're directly logged in to the machine. We're checking the IP address and in our case the IP address is 10 10 10 51. So that's our point of entry for all HTTP based connections. The next thing we're going to do is going to have a look at the definition of configurations for HA proxy. So we go into etc HA proxy HA proxy .cfg, and we see all the possibilities and all the configurations that we have put in place. You see the globals, the defaults, but what is of interest to us are the front ends and the back ends. Our primary front end is bound to port 80. So the HTTP port and proxies all traffic through to a named backend called servers. And when we have a look at the server's backend, we see that we have one server that is redirected to, and that one has the IP 10, 10, 10, 52. That IP is the IP address of our Varnish server, and the primary HTTP-based connections are sent to over port 6081. So everything HTTP-based is sent to 6081. This is not proxy protocol, this is regular HTTP. But we also defined a secondary input, a secondary front end, which is not bound on port 80, the HTTP port, but 81, just for the sake of testing. That one refers to or proxies through a separate backend. Service proxy is also a named backend that also has a single server that it proxies through. It's also the same varnish server pointing to 10, 10, 10, 52, but on port 6083 instead of 6081. And we did the addition of the send proxy v2 configuration so that HA proxy knows that the system behind supports the proxy protocol. So again, to address varnish over the proxy protocol, we have to go to 10, 10, 10, 51 using the port 81 to see it in action. Next up, we're going to connect to varnish and going to have a look at the configurations there. Let's have a look at the IP, which is no surprise, it's 10, 10, 10, 52. We're also interested in seeing the startup options for Varnish. We're using systemd on a Debian Wheezy here, 
and we refer to the binary, the startup binary, and we have two useful parameters, the minus A parameters. Minus A without the IP on 6081 does HTTP and HTTP only, whereas the minus A property on 6083, as mentioned and as explicitly defined, can handle the proxy protocol that is referred to uh, in, in HA proxy. Let's have a look at the VCL. You see that we're referring to 10.10.10.53 10, on port 80. That's pretty standard. And that's pointing to the last server in our setup, the web server that contains a PHP script. But what we do is we add a bunch of extra headers, a bunch of extra request headers, X client IP, X server IP, X local IP, and X remote IP. That's solely for debugging purposes so that we can see the value of varnish variables such as client.ip, server.ip, local.ip, and remote.ip. We're adding return pass to make sure that Varnish doesn't cache, not because in general we don't want Varnish to cache, but just for the sake of this example. We're exiting and we finally go to the web server. We have a look at the IP, which is 10.10.10.53. 10, 10, and finally, we'll have a look at the index.php file that calls the custom request headers that we set in Varnish. So we have the X client IP, the X server ID, the X local IP, and the X remote IP. And additionally, we have the X forwarded for header that is set implicitly by Varnish. So we don't have to do that ourselves. Varnish does this for us. Now that's the configuration. Let's see how the browser deals with this. So if we go to 10, 10, 10, 51, being the IP address of our HE proxy, and this is done, as you remember, over the HTTP protocol internally. So there's no proxy support available right now. We didn't configure it that way. As you can see, the client IP, so the initiator of the connection is 10, 10, 10, 51. So unfortunately, the client IP that the application is managing to fetch is the IP of our HA proxy server. So that doesn't really help us. The server IP is the IP of the server, and that is the Varnish server. So that's 52. Local IP is 52 as well. Remote IP, so the IP of the machine sitting in front of it, is the 51, so being the HA proxy. And finally, the X forwarded 4 header is the 51, being the HA proxy too. This is not so useful. And this will fill up your log files, and that won't be healthy. You, you, you don't know who the original connection initiated, because in this case, it should be 10, 10, 10, 1, being the connection of our browser. Let's switch it up. And instead of accessing the HA proxy, let's access Varnish directly on port 6081. So that's the port that accepts HTTP traffic. The client IP is set correctly. The remote IP is set correctly. And the X forwarded 4 IP is set correctly as well. 10.10.10.1 10, 10, 10, is the IP of the client. So that's good. The server IP is the IP address of the current server. That is indeed 10.10.10.52. 10, 10, 10, and the local IP is 10.10.10.52. 10, 10, 10, so that's without the HA proxy. But remember, we want HA proxy there for advanced load balancing, for SSL termination, and other features. So the client IP and the X forwarded four headers are right, but it serves no purpose since we want HA proxy to sit in front of it. If we access the web server directly, none of these variables will be set. There's no X forwarded four, and all the custom ones that we send in Varnish will not be called because Varnish is not sitting in front of our application in this case. We access the application directly. So not a good solution either. Let's do it the way it should be done. Access HA proxy, but using port 81 explicitly so that the proxy protocol is triggered. And as you can see now, we have the situation we want. The client IP is indeed 10.10.10.1, 10, 10, 10, the IP address of our local connection. The server IP is 10.10.10.51 10, 10, 10, as well. So which server was accessed? Now, as you can see, client IP and server IP were automatically changed by Varnish internally. That's the nice feature. That's how Varnish deals with proxy protocol support. The local IP is still the 52, so the local connection, the server itself, is still the 52. And the remote one, the, con the, the place where the connection came from, is the 51. So that's all according to the plan. And finally, the X forwarded for header is set correctly. So if we terminate SSL on HA proxy and do some other magic, the application will be unaware of that. The application knows, based on the X forwarded for header, that 10.10.10.1 10, 10, 10, is the right IP address, is the IP address of the client and that can be logged and that can be used however you see fit. There you have it, that was that. Now you can see how the proxy protocol works. Is it a spectacular feature? Maybe not so much, but it's a useful one. It's a no-brainer to use if you have multiple layers of proxying, if you have an HA proxy that terminates SSL, that does load balancing, and there's a varnish sitting behind it, well, at least use the proxy protocol. Your application developer will be grateful. 
So thanks a lot for checking me out. Have a look at the show notes. There's some useful links in there and see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>